And uh, second, she say, um, you are um, uh, not uh, thoughtful. I'm not thoughtful. Yeah. When you come visit my home, you yeah. you don't don't buy a flower or uh, some chocolate for her. Very bad. It was very bad? Yeah, very okay. bad in Vietnam. Very bad. Hi guys, it's eBird Online. Guess what? This was all a lie. How do I know? Well, I've been snooping around on social media as per usual. So bear with me and I'll give you all the details. Yes guys, we're going to talk about the car crash that is Riley and Violet. Yes, that's right, it's 90 Day Fiancé, Before the 90 Days, Season 6, Episode 7. Now as we all know, Riley's unburdened with the ability to self-reflect. And in between bouts of psychotic drama-fueled snooping, Riley treats all of the viewers to his whole range of emotions, such as rage, indignation, annoyance, frustration and outright hostility. Guys, he really is quite the emotional character. And in the past couple of weeks, I had begun to feel sorry for Violet. But guys, today, that all stopped. Why, I hear you all ask, what's so special about today? Well, guys, today is the day that I found incontrovertible evidence that Violet is in fact a liar. Now... We'd long suspected that she wouldn't know the truth if it came up and slapped her in the face. But guys, the lie she told this week is so grave that I'm now completely convinced that Violet is fuelled by undiluted dishonesty. She's a very bad sort. My granny always told me, never trust a liar. Well guys, in Violet, we have a 24 karat gold bullshitter. But just before I take you on my little spin around social media to expand on Violet's lies, I'm going to review very quickly what happened on this week's episode. But just before I do, I just want to take time out to thank everybody who's subscribed to my channel thus far. I genuinely appreciate it. And thank you for all of my comments. But if you've yet to do so, guys, consider subscribing. So many people are watching my videos very regularly. And you've yet to press that big red button. Guys, give it a go. It can't hurt. And also, if you know anybody else that would enjoy this video, please consider sharing it. Thanks guys. Right, so without further ado, I give you Riley and Violet. So when we first meet Riley, guys, <laughs> I forget how delusional he is. Here's what he had to say. I arrived in Vietnam a few days ago, and even though yesterday Violet and I had a, a straight up blowout argument, it ended well because I got to finally meet her family. So today we made plans to meet at the War Remembrance Museum in Ho Chi Minh City, and I'm hoping that we could get everything back on track. Oh, for the love of God, Riley, no, it won't get on track. Last night, you sat in Violet's family home and in front of her siblings, children and mother, you called her a liar. Now, as it turns out, you were 100% correct. Not necessarily about the shirtless man, but definitely about a few other things. But it's very clear to me that you two, well, you don't seem to gel. And guys, I've got the idea that Riley likes the idea of Violet, but the actuality of Violet... I just don't think that she's a fit for him. Anyway, these guys are going to see another war museum in Ho Chi Minh City. And as the couple walk around, Riley regales Violet with his in-depth knowledge of the American military. As you know, guys, Riley used to be a soldier. And suddenly, he recognises something. He looks over at a helicopter with the words Airwolf on the back. And he advises Violet that it's an Airwolf. And he said, yeah, they're paratroopers. This is airborne. Riley, we're looking at a bloody helicopter. And Riley tells us that this war museum is a documentation of the Vietnam War and the atrocities that took place during that war. And when he looks over at Violet, she looks very melancholy. And she said, you know, every time I come here, I feel so sad. And Riley said, yeah, you know, war's bad, but it happens. And guys, I couldn't help but think that he was, I don't know, somewhat dismissive. And try as I might to find the full death toll of the war in Vietnam. It's estimated that about 60,000 American soldiers died and 1.3 to 3.8 million Vietnamese people died during that war. And very quickly, just in case anyone's wondering, the reason for the significant variance between the figures, I think, is because there's combat-related casualties. But then also things like disease and famine, which I think in some cases were added to the figures and I guess some cases not. But anyway, Riley took a few photos and Violet let producers know that she had something on her mind. I am confusing now because uh, sometimes I see him uh, very cute, very lovely, sometimes very terrible. Wow, sometimes she finds him very cute and lovely and sometimes terrible. The only question I have is, when the hell has he ever been cute and lovely? I miss that day. 
Roll it back, I say. We all want to see cute and lovely Riley. I'm not sure it even exists. But then Violet goes on to say, I need for Riley to understand a little bit more about my culture, about Vietnamese culture. I need him to understand how, how rude he is. Hmm, just a thought, Violet, but I've got a feeling he's going to say back at you because you're very rude. In American culture, you can't call someone fat, old and ugly and get away with it. You can't text somebody's dad behind their back. I think the age-old, time-honoured adage of 90 Day Fiancé stars not understanding the first thing about each other's cultures is upon us, guys. Who'd have thunk it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Both of these two clowns are genuinely clueless about each other's culture. So, back to the matter in hand. What seems to be the problem, Violet? And my mom talked with me. Um, she she said, uh, you are jealous and want to control me. I'm not trying to control. I'm trying to understand what's going on. I mean... Let me talk first. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And guys, this was a perfect case in point. Violet's halfway through getting her problems off her chest and Riley dives in. I'm not trying to control and he literally, guys, controls the conversation. Violet has to say, let me finish, let me continue. This is a basic tenant of Riley's personality from what I've seen. But it's the second thing that we're going to talk about later on in this video that Violet is irritated by and it's something that I brought up last week as well. When Riley went to dinner, he didn't bring chocolates or flowers or anything like that. That's pretty rude. But like I say, later in the video, there's much more news on this and there's basically a whole different slant. I'm not uh, thoughtful. I'm not thoughtful. Yeah. When you come visit my home, you, yeah. you don't, don't buy a flower or uh, some chocolate for her. Very bad. But Riley said, I'm very, very sorry. I did not mean to be disrespectful at all. And guys, Riley conceded that... He did need to learn more about Violet's culture and he said he would do so. But then he flipped the script like I knew he would. And he said, when are you going to learn, Violet, more about American culture? I'll give you an example. You call me fat and ugly in front of people. What? I say you are ugly, you are very bad. In my culture, in America, that's rude, that's disrespectful, especially when a woman says that about the man that she's with. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. And so Violet pleads ignorance and she says, in Vietnamese culture, you can laugh and make those sorts of jokes and it's no big deal. And there's a couple of my subscribers that have said in comments that they've discovered that to be the case in Southeast Asia. Guys, don't shoot me. I'm not saying it's a monolith. But as you know, I've spent a lot of time in Thailand. I lived in China. I lived in Hong Kong. And whilst they do go further, I think, than we would do and they're more direct, I still don't know. I'm still not really sold that it was just, there was nothing in it. I'm still just not sold on that fact. But I do remember one thing, and this was when I lived in Hong Kong. I think I was about 22, and I was a size, I guess in American sizes, a size four at the time. And whenever I used to go clothes shopping, the shop girls always used to like laugh and giggle and say, she exy, exy large. (laughs) And it used to really irritate me. So they do kind of go over the top, but I don't know. I just find it so difficult to believe with the proliferation of like, you know, American films around the world and so on, that Violet wouldn't have picked up that that's not what most people do. Oh yeah, and just one last thing. When I was in Thailand, there's a kind of, as we all know, a very big market in Westerners going over there and trying to get Thai brides or, I don't know, just Thai girlfriends for a couple of weeks. And they always used to speak really scathingly and really badly about these, you know, older, overweight guys. And they would always pass this off as a joke. But really, that's definitely what they thought. They were just meal tickets for them. So, yeah, that's kind of, I don't know, all I have to go on. I don't know. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. Weigh in in the comments on this because I'd love to know anyone that's travelled extensively there. I'd love to know your thoughts. But then Riley went on to point out one more thing. And he said, I'm a very dark skinned black guy and I've only seen one other black person since I've been here. So really, when you say things like that, he's ugly. I take it as an attack. I'm a black man in this country and they're already looking at me differently because I'm six foot four. I am dark. And when you say, oh, he's ugly, you start feeding the stereotype that if you're light skinned, black, you're prettier. And guys, this I can vouch for. There's massive, I don't know, anti-blackness across Asia. Everywhere I've been, it's been quite pervasive. So I can actually understand how Riley feels. And and I am going back many years now, but you really do get stared at. So 
So I guess he was feeling a little bit conspicuous already, and then that happened. And it seems like Violet's genuinely sorry. And she told producers, when I heard that Riley felt alienated, I felt really upset. And she said I sympathised with him in order to make this relationship better. I need to change some of my ways. Yes, Violet, you got that right. And so at the end of the segment, Violet says I'm very, very sorry. And Riley said I receive and accept your apology. And they both agree to learn more about each other's cultures and to talk more. And Riley said, I really want to work as hard as I can on this relationship because I really care about Violet. Well, guys, to that I say, yeah, yeah, yada, yada. As far as I'm concerned, if you have a relationship which is such hard work, not just even in the initiality, but at any point, it's not necessarily worth it. Maybe you're not the right fit. I'm not saying it should all be plain sailing, but... This seems bloody, well, it seems arduous. It's like pulling teeth. They don't even seem to have an infinitesimal knowledge about each other's cultures or customs. And I'm really, really struggling to see what they have in common. I really am. If I'm to be brutally honest, I think Violet's on the make and I think she just wants to get to America. And I think that Riley's labouring under the misapprehension that the reason that he's had no luck with women thus far is because he's not a fit for American women. And I think his idea of A Vietnamese woman was probably someone a lot less outspoken. But little did he know. (laughs) He ended up with a lying little firecracker. But I also think ostensibly, if things work out, Riley thinks that he'll have the upper hand in this relationship. Obviously, he'll control the green card and to some extent the finances early on in their relationship. But as we've seen many, many times before, as soon as somebody gets that green card in their hand five months after marriage, everything can turn on its head. Look at Natalie. Look at Larissa. Look at Lewis. Look at Mohammed. The list is endless. It goes on and on. And I also think that Violet's doing this for her daughters as well. Both of them want to move to the States with their mother. So yeah, that's what I think her game is. And guys, let me know what you think in comments down below. But enough of all that. And let's get on to the juicy lies that Violet this week has actually admitted telling. So first up, I want to doth my cap. Guys, it's so much classier than giving a shout out to In Touch Weekly because they ran a very interesting story this week and it pretty much proves that Violet is in fact the liar that Riley claims she is. Now, if you remember last week when I was talking about this couple, I had my suspicions that she was lying. She's very, very evasive. And she becomes, I don't know, quite argumentative when pressed on certain topics. So I've had my suspicions, but wow, we've caught her in an absolute humdinger. So of course, as I've just covered, this week Violet actually said to Riley that it's very, very bad. You were very rude not bringing chocolates or flowers or some sort of small gift for my mum. And guys, I for one agreed with her. In fact, I couldn't believe my eyes. And this week Riley was apologetic for unknowingly disrespecting her. But guys, on social media, on Instagram, following last week's episode, Violet wrote the following message. And it was a public message to Riley. And it was regarding this incident with the gift and her mum. And she put, at just Riley, I see people make attacks on you and I'm very sorry. I should have admitted that you asked what for my mother to buy. And I told you that you don't need to. And then she further said, I was embarrassed on camera to say it was my fault, so I blamed you. I'm sorry that I created pain for you on social media. And in the comments section, Riley said, you literally didn't need to post this. It doesn't matter. People only know what they see. I appreciate the post, but don't try and explain anything. Nobody truly cares. Um, Riley, the e-bird cares. <laughs> I dragged you up and down these YouTube streets last week and I'm here to say I'm sorry. Yes, guys, lap it up now because it doesn't come very often. (laughs) But guys, what an absolute stitch up Violet is. And this proves to me she is just a massive liar at heart. That wasn't a big deal. Violet, it's your own mum. You could have said, mummy, don't worry, he's going to take you out and buy you a present later on in the holiday. Or, oh God, mum, we had something for you. We left it at the hotel room. There's a million and one things you could have said, but instead you chose to hang him out to dry just because it was slightly easier for you. And it just really makes me think now about Violet's character because I'll tell you one thing. If somebody lies about these, I don't know, infinitesimal things, knowing they're going to make somebody else on national TV look bad, what else are they lying about? I just think she's now extremely untrustworthy. Now I know this is going to sound weird, 
But I have more of a problem with people that lie about tiny things rather than people that lie about, you know, something which is life or death or really important to you. If you tell a lie to save, I don't know, your relationship or your job, that's one thing. But she was just lying to save face. And in front of who? What? Just your own family? Guys, it's nothing short of bizarre. So I'd love to know what you guys think in comments down below. Do you think now that Violet has blotted a copybook and she's just an out and out liar? I kind of do. No wonder she wants to forget everything that happened in the past and focus on the future. Of course, because you lied and lied and lied in the past and you know you can't really cover up for it. And I think the only reason that we know about this is because Riley was taking an absolute battering on Reddit, on Instagram, on Twitter, all forms of social media, TikTok, and everybody was calling him ignorant and rude and, and saying that he made Americans look terrible. And only because it was so severe did she kind of stand back up and say, yeah, I lied about this. Think about this, guys. She lied about it at the time. That's one thing. Maybe that was heat of the moment. But then the following week when you're going to film again, she actually tells the same lie all over again in front of the cameras and says, why didn't you bring my mum something? It's very, very bad. So after the first lie, she hadn't even reflected on it and thought, actually, that's the wrong thing that I've done there. It took for her to see social media for her to realise, actually, this is really wrong. Yeah, shady AF. Sorry, but shady. Anyway, that's about enough from me. I'm going to get on with my next video. I'd love to know. Please put all your thoughts down below on what you think to this couple. I think it's lurching from bad to worse. And don't worry, next week I'll cover the whole restaurant scene with Tiffany. So I haven't forgotten. I've got you covered. But in the meantime, guys, enjoy the video. But please don't forget to smash that like button and also hit the subscribe button if you've yet to do so. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day. Some kind of butterfly